Interesting. So when your application is running, um, there's this, this loop that basically sits there and goes, do I have anything to do? Do I have anything to do? Do I have anything to do? And when something actually is scheduled and ready to, to, to happen, in, our, you know, in, the, in the case we've talked about already, it's a touch input. Then it goes and dispatches to you, to your targets or to your notifications, uh, to tell you that something happened. Uh, this is actually the same mechanism. So when you schedule a stream in a run loop, you're basically saying, I want this run loop to check the stream for input or to write, stream, write data to output. Um, also, a similar, it's the same mechanism used for timers. So when you schedule a timer in a run loop, um, it actually, it's, you know, every time the run loop runs, it says, does this timer need to do anything? Does this timer need to do anything? At, at some time, the timer will say, hey, I need you to call this selector. And it goes and does that. Um, so the um, and a stream events are actually processed in the run loop. That's why you need to call that schedule and run loop. So uh, you'll notice there's an, actually another parameter here, which is uh, schedule and run loop for mode. And oftentimes, you know, most of your cases, in fact, I've very, I don't know if I've ever had to, pat to create my own mode, but um, it is useful sometimes. But we're going to pass in NS run loop common modes, and there are a few different um, scopes of what kind of events should get processed. So um, if we look here, you know, there's actually an example down at the bottom, UI tracking run loop mode. You may actually want to, um, you know, in the UI tracking event run loop mode, that's the kind of case where you want to track somebody's finger really closely. So the system will go ahead and it schedules certain things um, to not run in that run loop mode. Um, don't need to worry about that for now. For most of the work you're going to do, or most of the work you're going to run into, you're going to just pass in common modes. All right, so your, your delegate calls from NS stream. There is only one. Uh, there's stream handle event. Stream passes you the stream that you're a delegate for. Uh, and handle event is an enum of different, um, different kind of actions that, could be, that, that have occurred, different events that have occurred. Uh, you can get notified when the open of your stream is completed. You can get notified when there is space available. Uh, you can get notified when there's an error. You can get notified when it closed. Um, you can get also get notified when, why is that not in there? There's also um, stream events for uh, data did become available, uh, data did read. And uh, yeah, that's how you actually get data in. So when you get a NS stream event, uh, data did become available, I think it's called. You actually read from the stream, and you can get whatever bytes are sitting there waiting for you to process. Um, so here's a, here's a case where we're going to do the output stream. So if you, um, if you got an output stream from Bonjour, and you want to send data over that output stream to the other side, uh, you call write with a buffer and max length with the length, the size of the data that you want to send in bytes. Um, so here's a case where we want to send this hello world string over the network connection. Um, we're going to call write. So we, we put that into a buffer. Um, we call write with the buffer and then with the length of the buffer. And if there's, you know, for some reason we didn't write the number of bytes we thought we were going to, then we throw an exception. Bless you. So here's our input stream example. When you um, get one of these NS stream event, data available, bytes available, whatever it is, um, you take your input stream, you call read, and you pass in a buffer that's the right size with max length. Right? So you don't actually know how big. I think you can ask the stream how much data is sitting there waiting for it. You can allocate the right size. But let's say you've got some fixed size buffer. Um, you can read, let's say, 1024 bytes. You pass in a an alloc buffer of 1024 bytes, you say I, you can, the maximum you can put into this buffer is 1024, and it will call you back with the number of bytes that it actually read. So here's an example. So we um, create a buffer of 1024. We call read max length 1024 minus 1. And um, what we get back is what came in off the input stream. So let's, let's take a look at how we're going to use Bonjour to do that. Uh, I hand waved a little bit earlier when I said um, we're not going to look at the transfer of data. And I'm going to hand wave a little bit now, but I'm going to post this code on the website. 
um, in this start server call that we had before, uh, that we looked at before down at the bottom, uh, right up above it, we're actually creating a network port. Um, and again, I'll spare you the details. That's not really important right now. You can look at the example code. But we're basically creating a socket uh, for network communication, and we're getting a port off of it. And that's what we pass down to Bonjour. Um, that socket is used for reading data off the network. Uh, that's how we set things up before we advertise for Bonjour so that there's something there listening uh, for data. Now, where the input and output streams come in useful is once we made a connection. So down in our found devices table view controller, right, the table view that lists out all of the different uh, services that it found, uh, I added there are a couple more functions down here that say, you know, standard table view, did select row at index path. What it does in that case, because you can't read from a stream that you don't have an IP address for, the first thing it does is it gets the net service from the array, sets itself as the delegate, and then resolves. Right? So resolve is the action of getting the IP address from a, for a service. When we get the net service did resolve address, which is a delegate method for the net service, um, we're going to create a message sender uh, UI view controller. And we're going to um, set the net service to be the one that we just resolved. And then we'll push it onto our stack. Now in our message sender, uh, really quick, the nib here is one text field. It's just a, a text field for input. All right, so here it is. Um, and we're going to use it to send text messages back and forth via Bonjour. Uh, so let's look at the message sender. Uh, again, pretty simple impl implementation here. Uh, it has a net service because we set it before we pushed it. When view will appear gets called, it gets the output stream. All right, so we're only going to use this to send messages to the Bonjour service that we're connecting to. It gets the output stream. It sets itself as the delegate. Um, it schedules in the run loop, and then it opens that stream. And then, of course, when we're, when we're going away, we'll tear that down. Uh, and then this is, this is pretty much the meat of how we're sending the data. Um, when we get a text field should return. So when I hit return on that text field, we get this delegate method, because we're, again, the delegate for that text field. We, um, we're going to create an NS data that basically contains the uh, text from the text field. So whatever I type is going to get packaged up as NS data. And then we're going to write those bytes to the output stream that we got back when we got pushed onto the stack. Right? So again, the process is you select an item in the, the NSNet service list. It's going to resolve that to get an IP address. It's going to push this text field onto the stack, onto the view stack. And um, anything you type will get packaged up and sent to the other end. Uh, and then again, a little hand waving here, but when we, the, net, the server here is actually going to be listening for that data. Um, here we get a did receive data callback from the server down below. Um, we unpack the string from that NS data, and we're just going to throw up an alert that says, you know, the title is message, the message is the string, um, and then put an OK button. And then we'll show that alert. So let's do that quick. All right, so. Of course, it only sees simulator right now. Let me launch the app on my phone, on my iPod Touch. Uh, there's this network delay, but it will show up. It, only when I'm about to give up will it actually show up, because that's just how it works. There it is. Um, and of course, the simulator showed up in here as well, right? So what you see, really quick, what you see, um, on the simulator is it found the simulator first, and then it found my iPod. But if I look on the device, the first thing it did was it found my iPod, which is the local Bonjour service, and then it found the simulator. So I'm going to click on the simulator here. Come on. Right, which means I'm connecting, I'm resolving to the simulator. I'm getting the, the IP address for the simulator. And now whatever I type should show up on, as an alert on the simulator. So I'm going to type, hello. CS193P. I'm going to hit return. It's going to package up the data, send it, 
And on the other end, we get a message that says, hello, CS193P. Um, 